sculpting in ZBrush can be tough at times, especially when your topology is not supporting you. So at that time, it's quite frustrating. However, there is a tool that is called a Dynamash. Dynamash saves a lot of your time when your topology is something like not supportable or it's not capable of doing or you know adopting any sort of sculpting over it. So Dynamash is like a dynamic uh, subdivision that helps you a lot. So let's see in chapter 9 how we can use the Dynamash. I can't paint my mask. Then use Dynamesh. Oh, cool. So now we will start with our chapter 9, which is about the Dynamesh. Dynamesh is one of the main modes of working in ZBrush and it's totally different from subdivision or Z modeler or other workflows. So basically it works by breaking a model down into little boxes like 3D pixels. It's kind of hard to put into words so let's just get right into the demonstration and let's see how it works. So let's see you got a model and you want to make some big sculpting changes to it. So maybe you want to make the ears bigger here Okay, let me go to my uh, move tool, VMV. By the this mod, uh, uh, model, you can uh, find in the link uh, in the description below. You can download this and will work and you can work with this one. You, or you can use any other model that you have. Okay, so, but this one you can see in the link in the description below. So I'll press X over here for my subdivision or uh, for my uh, symmetry. Okay. And what I will do here is that I will just go and increase my brush size. And what I'm doing here is that I'm just trying to increase this ear. So let me make the ears a little bigger here. And you can see that it's getting a bigger here. Okay. So even if my uh, wireframe is not on, or if you will turn on your wireframe, but without wireframe, also it is easily noticeable. Let me turn off the fill here, only the wireframe. Just notice here, you will see that there are uh, some stretching going on over here. Okay. And uh, that stretching can, you can just uh, increase your subdivision level. Okay. Control D if I will press it two, three times. Okay. It might uh help to get that out of your way but if i will let me turn off my wireframe if i will go to my uh standard brush tool and try to make it smaller and i will try to sculpt something here okay it looks fine let's do here looks fine but as soon it will reach to this part just see what kind of awkward uh you know details that's giving me like some stretchy the one uh actually i don't want let me undo that and let me add some more dynamic uh, more uh, subdivision not the dynamic but actual subdivision Control d i will press here so let's see if it uh, solves the problem now if i'll try and reach to this side so you can see that it is solving the problem but if I will zoom in, you will still notice there is some stretching going on, okay, which can be problematic if I will do some more details on it, okay. So, to solve this issue, let me delete all this uh, subdivision which I have applied over here, okay. So, delete higher. So, how we can solve this issue? To solve this issue, uh, we will use Dynamesh. So let's go down here and click on the Dynamesh inside the geometry we have. Now, Dynamesh, let's see what do we have here. We have uh, some uh, let, a lot of options here, but uh, usually uh, you don't use all of them at the same time. And hardly you use all of them, but we'll cover the, more imp the most important ones right now so the two most commonly used or you can say uh, the one that you will be using a lot 
is the two options one is the resolution and the dynamesh button the dynamesh button is the one that initializes so dynamesh it does not work with the subdivision level that's why i removed all the subdivision level here but if you have a subdivision level and you will try to click on the dynamesh it will give you an pop-up uh, alert that you have to remove your subdivision level or you have to freeze your subdivision level okay as i don't have it so i might not get that result so let's see what happens if we right away click over here without changing anything so let me click on the dynamesh right now and it is initialized okay so let's press shift f here to see the wireframe just to check what actually happened over here so if you will uh, see over here there's basically a, a kind of polygons that are evened out the entire topology into little squares okay and triangles there are also somewhere here okay now if i will press ctrl z over here so you can see this is how it uh, was before okay it was like an animation type topology that usually we create for animation purposes and let me redo what we did before uh, this so let's go back here and you now you can see you have tiny square uh, you know parts and it is divided uh, each polygon into tiny square parts over here so this is what you get uh, like you get after you apply the dynamesh over here so this is what it looks like after the dynamesh so let's undo this and try to play with the resolution here now resolution is right now 128 which is a quite good resolution you can say but maybe if you want to go a little bit lower for say around maybe 75 okay and then if i will press dynamesh again so you can see that this time i have even more bigger uh squares over here because what i have done is that i have decreased the resolution over here so uh that's because of the lower resolution so if we undo this one okay and crank this up quite higher more than 120 add as you might be expecting here maybe a little bit go higher but as to uh, as uh, more higher i will go uh, it will actually make my computer slow at some time so i don't recommend going uh, going too high but just you know you can double it up of your current resolution or something uh, let's go to 200 2080 it's somewhere like that okay so I, if i will press dynamash here okay so you can see uh, it is taking a lot of time to initialize it and now you can see the uh, you know those boxes are really really small as i have increased this so let me undo that and instead of uh doing this i can go 512 something like that and press dynamash here so this is quite good but still you can see as it is too high so it is giving me these weird uh creases okay so let me keep it uh 128 okay which looks fine here so one more thing is that a dynamesh actually uh, work on the size as you can say uh dynamesh is size dependent so if we go to the size sub palette over here let me undo this one okay and let's go to the size and you can see this is the actual size that we have of this model right now so you have seen how it looked like when it was uh, around uh, this size and when i clicked on the dynamesh if i will make it quite smaller somewhere just like this okay and if i will just frame it up by pressing frame button or pressing f and this and this time if i will go to dynamesh and using the same value 128 if i will try to dynamesh this so you can see i'm not getting the same result because it is so small that it's not finding the 
the polygon size and even a 128 resolution seems quite low for it so i have to go oops uh i've changed this one let me redo this okay so even if it is 128 it's not showing me the same result so let me go and increase it and then try to apply dynamesh now it is getting better okay but in short it depends on the size so let me undo everything and go back to its actual size where i was before pressing f to bring this back again and now if i will go back to my dynamesh with 128 you can see the result at 128 is same which was at something around 1500 and when it was small so dynamesh is basically uh, something that is a size dependent here so going back here you can see the size uh now zbrush uh you know to work with objects that are in range of roughly one to five units uh tall you can do easily easily dynamesh there but if it goes uh, below uh, one unit so that means you need to crank up your dynamesh uh, resolution in order to get the result uh, something like this so dynamesh actually itself like uh, per, uh, like you know objects to be particularly uh, you know inside the neighborhood of uh, one to five units so that's why i will keep everything as it is i will not change any size here so this is something to keep in mind to check the size of your model if it is really small you might want to increase that resolution really high as i did and at some certain uh, higher uh, resolution it i was getting a uh, like similar result so uh for say like around 30 to 40 units in maximum like dimension then uh you will get this kind of result okay so uh those are the basics of dynamesh you can see it's really good for evening out topology and it actually does a lot more so we'll get into that later on this chapter so i hope you have understood about the dynamesh basics from the like today's uh, introductory lesson and if you have liked this video please click on the like button and if you want this file you can go in the description below please subscribe to my channel if you have not subscribed to it yet and i will really appreciate if you will share my channel on your social media account if you have your social media accounts and uh also please click on the bell icon so you can get more and more notification and all i need is your support so i can get good watch time hours so watch my videos online and i need more subscribers so keep on sharing with your friends and i will be keep on uploading newer and newer courses and tutorials on this uh, channel so hopefully in future i will create a complete uh, zebrish tutorial uh, like tutorial on how to create objects like a realistic uh, face or stylistic face or even uh, objects like how to model a shoe how to model a hard surface uh, object inside zbrush but uh, for all these uh, things i want more subscriber and more watch time hour so i can get motivated to do all this thank you guys and take care till we meet in the next class